The Yadarin Armada surrounded the human ship like a pack of wolves encircling a lone rabbit. In that moment, as the Prometheus drifted helpless before the alien fleet, Dr. Wayne Wilson knew Earth's first contact mission had gone horribly wrong. Your species is primitive and your expansion unchecked, Commander Umbra declared over the comms. Submit to Yadarin rule or be destroyed. Wilson pleaded and bargained, but it was no use. The technologically superior Yadarins quickly overwhelmed the human crew and seized control of the Prometheus. As their ship was impounded and the crew imprisoned, the awful truth became clear. The galaxy was teeming with advanced civilizations who viewed humanity as a backwater threat to be contained. Earthlings were hopelessly outnumbered and outmatched. Umbra allowed Wilson to transmit one final warning message homeward before the Prometheus went dark. The revelation of alien life and imminent invasion sent shockwaves through Earth's halls of power. World leaders convened in secret, desperate to avoid mass panic and societal collapse. They needed a solution, and fast. We may have one option, proposed Dr. Ali Adari, a maverick geneticist, to the Grimface Council. My team has pioneered new human cloning techniques. We could breed a secret army of enhanced soldiers, strong enough to resist the Yadarans. The ethics were questionable, the risks enormous. But with the Yadaran threat drawing closer by the day, and no alternatives in sight, Dari's radical plan was Earth's last hope, and so Project Vanguard was born. Deep beneath the surface, hidden labs churned out the first generation of clone fighters. The survival of humanity itself now rested on this secret force, and the tenacity of captives like Wilson to fight the Yadarans from within. A battle loomed that would determine nothing less than mankind's fate among the stars. In the fortified depths of the Vanguard Genetics Lab, Dr. Aliyah Diari hunched over a glowing DNA sequencer, her dark eyes intense with focus. She watched as the machine rapidly analyzed genetic samples from Earth's most extraordinary individuals, Olympic athletes, genius scientists, indomitable warriors. With each completed scan, the sequencer highlighted key genes that could be spliced and amplified to engineer the perfect soldiers. Around her, a hand-picked team of brilliant geneticists worked frantically at their stations, pushing the boundaries of human cloning further than ever before. The air buzzed with tension and purpose. They all knew the fate of humanity itself rested on their efforts. Dr. Malik Rahman, Dari's trusted second-in-command, looked up from his gene-editing console. We're making incredible breakthroughs in muscle density and oxygenation capacity, he reported, excitement warring with exhaustion in his voice. The Vanguard clones will have strength and endurance far beyond any natural human. Dari allowed herself a tight smile. Good. And the intelligence augmentations? Progressing rapidly, piped up Dr. Elena Sartoff from across the lab. We've isolated the genes linked to information processing speed, memory retention, and problem solving. These soldiers will have minds as formidable as their bodies. Dari nodded, pleased but not satisfied. They were achieving miracles here, rewriting the human genome itself in a desperate attempt to give their species a fighting chance. But would it be enough to face the Yadarans? Her eyes strayed to the countdown clock glowing on the wall. 179 days, 11 hours, 36 minutes until the projected arrival of the main Yadaran fleet. Less than six months to build an army from nothing. It had to be enough. The alternative was too horrific to contemplate. Shaking off her moment of doubt, Dari turned back to the DNA sequencer with renewed perseverance. Let's keep pushing, she exhorted her team. I want the first batch of embryos ready for accelerated growth within 72 hours. We'll modify and enhance as we go. As the geneticists plunged back into their crucial work, Corporal Jenna Reeves burst into the lab, her youthful face lined with urgency. Dr. Dari, urgent message from Mission Control. It's about the Prometheus rescue team. Dari's heart seized with dread, but she forced her voice to remain calm. Report, Corporal. It's bad, Doc, Reeves said grimly. They found the Prometheus crew, what was left of them. The Yatterans had butchered all but a few for experiments, but they got the survivors out. A few weary cheers broke out around the lab, a precious glimmer of hope amidst the bleak news. If even a handful of the Prometheus crew had endured Yadarin captivity, 
Perhaps humanity was not as defenseless as they seemed. There's more, Reeves continued. Dr. Wilson from the Prometheus overheard the Adderans. He says the invasion fleet will be here in six months, not nine like we thought. They're coming to strip Earth of resources and exterminate us. The already sober mood in the lab turned downright funereal. Six months to salvation or annihilation. Dari took a deep breath, meeting the eyes of each colleague in turn. In them, she saw her own feelings mirrored. Fear. Anguish. Desperation. But also steely persistence. They had no choice but to succeed. You heard the corporal, Dari said, her quiet voice ringing with authority. We have a new timeline. And that means we stay in this lab no matter what until Project Vanguard delivers the army humanity needs. Sleep in shifts and work around the clock. Our species is counting on us. As her team threw themselves back into their vital labors with redoubled intensity, Dari turned her gaze back to the DNA models flickering on her screen. The genetic code swam before her tired eyes, but she blinked the fog away. She would unravel the very threads of life itself if she had to. Dari vowed silently, splice and shape genes like a sculptor working clay, until the Vanguard Legion rose from these labs as humanity's avenging fist. The universe had declared war on her species. Now mankind would learn to fight back. The Vanguard Legion grew rapidly, its ranks swelling as clone after clone emerged from the accelerated growth chambers. In a matter of months, tens of thousands of enhanced soldiers stood ready, their eyes sharp, and bodies primed for combat. But the Yaterans were not idle. Scout ships slipped into Earth's orbit, cloaked from conventional detection. Yaterin spies infiltrated key locations, gathering intel on the sudden surge of human military activity. On the bridge of his flagship, Warmaster Kriv studied the reports with mounting concern. Hidden bases? Covert troop movements? This reeks of preparation for war. His second-in-command, Sub-Commander Zira, leaned over the holographic display. Perhaps a preemptive strike is in order, sir? Kriv's mandibles clicked in agreement. Choose a target. We'll uncover what these primitives are planning. The assault came without warning. Yadarin dropships pierced the night sky above one of the Vanguard's secret mountain facilities. Plasma bolts seared the air as commandos engaged the base's outer defenses. Inside the compound, alarms blared. Colonel Blake sprinted down a corridor, barking orders into his comm unit. This is not a drill. All Vanguard units to battle stations. Clone troopers poured from their barracks, weapons at the ready. Their enhanced reflexes allowed them to snap into formation with inhuman speed and precision. As Blake reached the command center, a thunderous explosion rocked the facility. Yadarin shock troops had breached the main entrance. Status report, Blake demanded, studying the tactical hollow map. Sir, enemy forces have penetrated to sub-level two, a clone lieutenant reported. Our troops are engaged, but we're taking heavy casualties. Blake's mind raced, analyzing angles of attack and choke points. Reroute squads Gamma and Delta to flank them from maintenance shaft 4C, and get me a direct line to the front. On the battlefield, clone soldiers traded fire with Yadarin commandos. The aliens possessed superior weaponry, but the vanguard troops showcased unprecedented speed and strength. A clone sniper, perched high in the rafters, picked off three Yoderans in rapid succession. Nearby, a vanguard heavy weapons specialist hefted a massive railgun with ease, unleashing a barrage that shredded through alien armor. But the Yoderans pressed on, their tactical acumen honed by centuries of interstellar warfare. They adapted quickly, focusing fire to overwhelm individual clones despite their enhanced durability. Blake's voice crackled over the comms. All units fall back to choke point beta. Lure them into the kill box. The clones executed the maneuver flawlessly, drawing the Yatterans into a narrow corridor. As the aliens pushed forward, hidden panels slid open, revealing dozens of clone troopers in entrenched positions. The ensuing crossfire was devastating. Observing from his command post, Blake allowed himself a grim smile, but his satisfaction was short-lived. A clone sergeant's panicked voice cut through the din of battle. Colonel, we have men pinned down in Sector 7G. Enemy fire's too heavy. They can't move. Blake didn't hesitate. 
he grabbed a pulse rifle and sprinted toward the conflict zone. As he rounded a corner, he saw a group of clones huddled behind failing energy barriers, yatter and fire raining down on their position. Without breaking stride, Blake laid down covering fire, his enhanced aim dropping two Yoderins in seconds. Move now, he shouted to the trapped soldiers. As the clones scrambled to safety, a Yoderin grenade arced through the air. Blake's augmented perception registered the threat in slow motion. He lunged, shielding a wounded clone with his body as the explosion tore through the corridor. The battle raged on, but the tide had turned. Overwhelmed by the Vanguard's superior numbers and capabilities, the Yetterin commandos retreated to their dropships. In the aftermath, as medics tended to the wounded, War Master Kreev received the battle report aboard his flagship. His eyes widened in disbelief. Impossible, he hissed. No natural humans could fight like this. Unless... A cold realization dawned. They've done it. They've mastered forbidden cloning technology. Kreev's claws danced over the ship's controls. Recall all scout ships. We must accelerate the invasion immediately before these abominations grow too numerous. As the Yadarin Armada altered course, racing toward Earth with newfound urgency, alarms blared in the offices of General Vasiliev. The vanguard's secrecy had been shattered. Vasiliev's weathered face was grim as he addressed Dr. Dari via hologram. We're out of time, Doctor. Suspend all further cloning. Focus everything on preparing our existing forces for imminent combat. In her lab, Dari nodded solemnly. Understood, General. What's our current strength? 50,000 Vanguard troops, combat ready, Vasiliev replied. It'll have to be enough. As the communication ended, Dari turned to her team. The weight of humanity's fate pressed down on them all. Without a word, they redoubled their efforts, knowing the coming days would determine the future of their species. Thousands of light years away, in the opulent throne room of the Yadarin Empire, Empress Tashin received the urgent reports. Her advisors clamored for immediate, overwhelming retaliation against the humans. But Tashin raised a hand, silencing them. Her compound eyes gleamed with intrigue. A clone army, you say? How unexpected. She turned to a slender figure standing quietly in the shadows. My daughter, it seems your fascination with these humans was not misplaced. Perhaps it's time you saw them for yourself. Princess Arya stepped forward, barely concealing her excitement. You wish me to accompany the invasion fleet, mother? Tashin nodded. Observe these creatures. Learn what drives them to such audacious acts. And if you deem them worthy, perhaps we might find a place for them in our empire after all. As preparations for departure began, Arya's mind raced with possibilities. Soon she would witness firsthand the ingenuity and dedication of these humans, and perhaps even meet the legendary warriors who dared to challenge Yadarin might. The Yadarin armada burst into the solar system like a swarm of angry hornets, their ships glinting in the distant sunlight. On Earth's moon, General Blake surveyed the hastily constructed vanguard defenses through his tactical visor. Clustered around him were the first wave of clone troopers, their enhanced bodies coiled with tension. Remember your training, Blake said, his voice steady. We hold this line at all costs. Aboard the Yadarin flagship, Princess Arya stepped onto the bridge, her compound eyes taking in the bustle of alien activity. A hulking figure detached itself from the shadows. Rezik, her newly assigned y Siren bodyguard. Your Highness, Rizik rumbled, mandibles clicking. I've been briefed on the human's capabilities. Rest assured, I will keep you safe from these savages. Arya nodded, but her gaze was fixed on the console showing Earth's pale blue orb. Perhaps they're more than savages, Rizik. We shall see. Without warning, the sky above the lunar surface erupted in blinding flashes. The Yadarin's nuclear barrage tore through the vanguard's outer defenses, vaporizing clone troopers by the hundreds. Blake's visor automatically polarized as he shouted orders, directing surviving units to fortified positions. Now, he roared into his comm, hit them while they're telegraphing their moves. From concealed hangars, swarms of vanguard assault craft screamed into the void. The clones piloted their ships with inhuman precision, weaving through the Yadarin fleet's point defense fire. Grappling lines shot out, latching onto alien hulls. 
Clone shock troops poured from the craft, magnetic boots clanging as they swarmed over the Yadarin ships. Inside the invaded vessels, close quarters combat erupted. The clones moved with blistering speed, their enhanced strength allowing them to rip through Yadarin armor with terrifying ease. Plasma bolts sizzled through cramped corridors as the aliens struggled to repel the unexpected borders. On the flagship's bridge, alarms blared. Warmaster Creaves snarled in frustration. Impossible! How did they survive the initial bombardment? Arya watched the tactical displays with growing unease. Their adaptability is impressive, she murmured. Razik's eyes narrowed. Impressive, but still doomed to fail. As the fighting intensified, Kriv's fury grew. Deploy the nerve agents, he commanded. Let's see how these abominations fare against chemical warfare. Sickly green clouds began billowing from ruptured canisters throughout the Yadarin fleet. Clone troopers caught in the mist convulsed, their enhanced bodies struggling against the potent toxins. Blake, watching from the Lunar Command Center, felt his blood run cold. Two can play at that game, he growled. Turning to his communications officer, he barked, Launch our fighters! Target that flagship! Sleek Vanguard interceptors streaked from concealed moon bases, their clone pilots pushing the craft beyond normal human limits. They bore down on the Yadarin command ship, unleashing salvos of missiles. The flagship rocked under the assault. On the bridge, Arya stumbled as a support beam came crashing down. Rezik moved with astonishing speed for his bulk, shielding the princess with his armored body. Your Highness, he grunted, helping her to her feet. We must get you to safety. As they hurried from the bridge, Rezik's expression was conflicted. The humans were proving far more formidable than anticipated. Their tactics were ruthless, innovative, and effective. For the first time in centuries, the Yadarins faced an enemy that could truly challenge them. In the skies above the moon, more Yadarin reinforcements poured from hyperspace. General Vasilyev, coordinating Earth's orbital defenses, grimaced at the tactical readings. Blake, he said over a secure channel, we've bloodied their nose, but this is just the beginning. Blake nodded grimly, watching as surviving clone units dug into new defensive positions. They had proven they could fight and win against the alien invaders, but the true test was yet to come. As the Yadarin fleet regrouped, preparing for their next assault, Princess Arya stood at a viewport, staring at the battle-scarred lunar surface. These humans were unlike anything she had imagined. Brutal, yes, but also endlessly inventive. For the first time, she wondered if there might be more to learn from them than simple subjugation. Behind her, Rezik watched silently, his own thoughts in turmoil. The coming war would push both species to their limits and beyond. The sudden flash of explosions lit up the void of space, illuminating the twisted wreckage of Yadarin warships. Colonel Blake watched from the Lunar Command Center as Vanguard fighters tore through the alien Vanguard fleet with surgical precision. Status report, he barked, eyes fixed on the tactical display. Sir, we've destroyed 37 enemy vessels, a clone officer replied, but long-range sensors show the main Yadarin armada approaching rapidly. Their numbers are overwhelming. Blake's fists tight. They had bloodied the enemy's nose, but the real fight was just beginning. On Earth, the newly formed Defense Council convened in an underground bunker. General Vasilyev paced before a holographic projection of the solar system, his weathered face etched with concern. We must face facts, he said, addressing the assembled military and civilian leaders. Even with the vanguard's capabilities, we cannot hope to repel the full might of the Yadarin Empire. I propose we begin evacuating key personnel and resources to establish an off-world colony, a fallback position to ensure humanity's survival. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the room, but a voice cut through the noise. With all due respect, General, that's premature. All eyes turned to the hologram of Colonel Blake, his image flickering slightly from the long-distance transmission. The Vanguard can win this fight, Blake continued, his voice steady. But we need reinforcements. Give me more troops, more ships, and I'll make the Yadarins regret ever setting foot in our system. Aboard the Yadarin flagship, Princess Arya stumbled as another explosion rocked the vessel. Klaxons blared 
and the acrid smell of burning circuitry filled the air. Suddenly, a massive armored form appeared before her. Rezik, her Wysiron bodyguard. Your Highness, we must evacuate immediately, he growled, mandibles clicking with urgency. Human boarding parties have breached multiple decks. As if to emphasize his point, the bulkhead behind them erupted in a shower of sparks. Three Vanguard clone troopers poured through the opening, their movements a blur of inhuman speed and precision. Arya's compound eyes widened in a mix of horror and fascination as Rezik engaged the attackers. His massive frame belied his agility, and he moved with fluid grace, deflecting plasma bolts with his armored gauntlets. But the clones were relentless, their enhanced strength allowing them to weather blows that would have felled a normal human. As Rezik grappled with one attacker, another clone flanked him, raising its weapon. Time seemed to slow for Arya as she saw the danger. Without thinking, she snatched a fallen Yadarin sidearm and fired. The clone staggered, its armor scorched, giving Rezik the opening he needed. In a whirlwind of violence, the Y-Siren warrior dispatched the remaining attackers. He turned to Arya, surprise evident in his alien features. An impressive shot, your highness, he rumbled. Now we must make haste to the escape pods. As they raced through the chaotic corridors of the dying ship, Arya's mind reeled. The clone warriors were unlike anything she had ever encountered, their ferociousness both terrifying and oddly compelling. Light years away in the opulent throne room of the Yadarin homeworld, Empress Tashin received the latest battle reports. Her advisors clamored for swift, brutal retaliation against the human upstarts. We must unleash our full might, one general insisted. Scorch their world to ash. Tashin raised a hand, silencing the room. Her compound eyes gleamed with an emotion her subordinates couldn't quite place. No, she said softly. These humans have proven far more interesting than we anticipated. I will not squander this opportunity to study them further. She turned to her chief intelligence officer. Prepare a cloaking device for my daughter. It is time for Arya to get a closer look at our adversaries. Back on the dark side of the moon, Blake strode through a massive underground cavern. Row upon row of stasis pods stretched as far as the eye could see, each containing a developing clone warrior. The hum of machinery and the soft glow of status indicators created an almost meditative atmosphere. A clone officer approached, saluting crisply. Sir, we've detected an anomaly near the eastern perimeter. Energy readings consistent with Yadarin technology, but no visual confirmation. Blake's eyes narrowed. Increase patrols and ready the countermeasures. We may have an uninvited guest. Guest? As Blake finished speaking, a sudden commotion erupted near the entrance to the cavern. Alarms blared and clone troopers rushed to secure the area. Through the chaos, a shimmering distortion appeared, slowly coalescing into a humanoid form. Princess Arya materialized, her cloaking device deactivating. She raised her hands in a gesture of surrender, compound eyes scanning the room warily. I come seeking dialogue, she said, her voice steady despite the dozens of weapons trained on her. My mother, Empress Tashin, wishes to open negotiations. Blake's eyes narrowed. And we're supposed to trust the word of an alien infiltrator? Before Arya could respond, the cavern trembled. A clone officer burst in, face pale. Sir, multiple Yadarin vessels have entered orbit. They're demanding we hand over the princess. The room erupted in heated debate. General Vasilyev's hologram flickered to life, his weathered face etched with concern. This could be a ploy to buy time while they reinforce their fleet. Or it could be a genuine opportunity, Blake countered, studying Arya intently. We've bloodied their nose. Maybe they're ready to talk. After tense discussions with Earth's Defense Council, a temporary ceasefire was agreed upon. As Yadarin ships withdrew to a safe distance, Blake led Arya to a secure conference room. She watched with fascination as he interfaced with the base's systems, his neural implants allowing direct communication. Your clones, Arya said, breaking the silence. They're remarkable, unlike anything we've encountered. Blake's expression remained neutral. They're not just clones. They're the vanguard of humanity's evolution. Over the next days, Earth buzzed with activity. 
New orbital defense platforms rose from concealed moon bases, their gleaming hulls filled with weaponry. Massive capital ships, products of reverse-engineered Yadarin technology, prepared for their maiden voyages. In a classified facility deep beneath the lunar surface, a new breed of clone warrior emerged from gestation tanks. Their eyes glowed with an otherworldly energy, the fruits of Project Purifier. Dr. Amelia Chen, lead geneticist, addressed the gathered military brass. By incorporating DNA from the Y-Siren warrior Rezik, we've unlocked latent psionic abilities in these new clones. They'll be our eyes and ears in enemy territory. Meanwhile, in the ornate chambers of the Yadarin Imperial Palace, Empress Tashin faced a rebellion of her own. Admiral Gorvix, his mandibles quivering with rage, led a group of hardliners in protest. You would negotiate with these savages, he spat. We should crush them beneath our heel. Tashin's compound eyes flashed dangerously. You overstep, Admiral. My daughter Arya will oversee operations against Earth as interim warmaster. This is not open for debate. As the dissenters were escorted out, Arya approached her mother's throne. I will not fail you, she said, voice tinged with purpose and a hint of uncertainty. Tashin's expression softened. You've seen their potential firsthand, my child. Guide us wisely. Back on Earth, the first purifier squad prepared for their inaugural mission. Their target? Admiral Gorvix's fleet, suspected of planning actions to sabotage the fragile ceasefire. As the stealthy craft carrying the purifiers slipped past Yatterin sensor nets, Colonel Blake addressed the Defense Council. We have a unique opportunity, he said, his voice firm, to demonstrate our strength while extending an olive branch. I propose a surgical strike against the hardliners threatening peace. General Vasilyev frowned. It's risky. If it fails, we could reignite the war. Blake's eyes gleamed with conviction. And if it succeeds, we show the Yatterans we're no longer prey to be hunted. We're equals. The council chambers erupted in heated debate, the fate of two civilizations hanging in the balance. The defense council chamber fell silent as Colonel Blake finished his proposal. General Vasilyev's hologram flickered, his face a mask of terrifying frustration. This is madness, Vasilyev growled. We should press our advantage, not roll out the welcome mat for our would-be conquerors. Blake stood firm. With respect, General, we have an unprecedented opportunity here. Princess Arya's offer of peace talks could change everything. Before Vasilyev could retort, a priority transmission cut through the tension. Princess Arya's face materialized above the central hollow projector, her compound eyes gleaming with an emotion the humans struggled to interpret. Esteemed counsel, she began, her voice clear and steady, I come before you not as a conqueror, but as an envoy of peace. My mother, Empress Tashin, has appointed me interim war master with full authority to negotiate on behalf of the Yadarin Empire. Murmurs rippled through the chamber. Arya continued, as a gesture of good faith, I propose an exchange of ambassadors and technology transfers. To demonstrate our sincerity, I offer a working prototype of our cloaking technology. The room erupted in a cacophony of voices. Blake's eyes widened, recognizing the magnitude of the offer. Vasilyev's hologram sputtered, his face contorting in disbelief. And what do you ask in return? Blake inquired, silencing the chamber. Arya's mandibles clicked softly. That the Vanguard Legion stand down its advanced fleets. Let us meet as equals, not adversaries. Hours of heated debate followed. Vasiliev argued vehemently against accepting the offer. But Blake's impassioned plea for peace ultimately swayed the council. With reluctance etched on their faces, they approved the deal. Within days, Earth buzzed with activity as preparations for Arya's arrival began. The appointed landing zone, a former military base outside Geneva, transformed into a hub of diplomatic activity. As Arya's shuttle descended through the atmosphere, Colonel Blake stood at attention, flanked by a mixed honor guard of human soldiers and vanguard clones. The sleek Yatterin vessel touched down, its hull still radiating heat from atmospheric entry. The boarding ramp extended, and Princess Arya emerged, resplendent in ceremonial armor. Behind her loomed the massive form of Gortak, her Wizaron bodyguard. The alien warrior's eyes darted suspiciously, clearly ill at ease on human soil. 
Blake stepped forward, extending his hand in the human gesture of greeting. Arya hesitated for a moment before mimicking the action, her three-fingered hand engulfing Blake's. Welcome to Earth, Princess Arya, Blake said, his voice carrying across the tarmac. We hope your stay here marks the beginning of a new era of cooperation between our peoples. As the diplomatic entourage made its way to the newly established embassy complex, a figure watched from the shadows. Commander Kane, leader of the renegade clone faction, observed the proceedings with narrowed eyes. His gaze lingered on Gortok, a mixture of hatred and fascination evident in his expression. Meanwhile, aboard the Yadarin cruiser Destiny, Major Gabriel Cross fidgeted in his dress uniform. As Earth's newly appointed ambassador to the Yadarin Empire, he carried the weight of humanity's future on his shoulders. Beside him stood his purifier attaché, their enhanced senses on high alert as the ship prepared to enter hyperspace. Cross's thoughts drifted to the clandestine briefing he'd received from General Vasilyev before departure. Despite the official stance of peace, Vasilyev had made it clear that he was preparing for all contingencies. Even now, Vanguard clones were being diverted to construct hidden weapons labs and shipyards throughout Earth's solar system. As the Destiny's engines hummed to life, Cross steeled himself for the challenges ahead. The ship disappeared into the swirling vortex of hyperspace, carrying Earth's hopes for peace and its insurance against betrayal into the heart of the Yadarin Empire. Back on Earth, Princess Arya addressed a gathering of human and Yadarin dignitaries. Today, we take the first steps on a path of mutual understanding and cooperation, she declared, her words translated seamlessly by advanced AI interpreters. Unbeknownst to the assembled crowd, forces were already in motion to derail this fragile peace. On distant Yadarin colonies, Admiral Mizorak, a powerful noble from a rival lineage, plotted in the shadows. His agents had already infiltrated Cross's entourage, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. As night fell over Geneva, Gortok stood watch on the embassy's balcony, his alien eyes piercing the darkness. A movement caught his attention, a figure scaling the perimeter wall with inhuman agility. The wise Siron tensed, ready for combat, only to recognize the distinctive silhouette of a vanguard clone. Commander Kane landed silently on the balcony, his enhanced muscles barely strained by the climb. Gortok and Kane locked eyes, centuries of ingrained hostility battling with a newfound curiosity. You're not here to kill, Gortok rumbled, a statement rather than a question. Kane's lips twitched in a humorless smile. Not tonight. I came to see the alien princess for myself, to understand what makes her different from the rest of you. Gortak's mandibles clicked thoughtfully. Perhaps we are not so different after all, clone warrior. We both serve greater powers, yet harbor our own agendas. Before Cain could respond, an alarm blared from within the embassy. Both warriors tensed, instinctively moving to defensive positions. Through the open balcony doors, they heard the frantic voice of an aide. Ambassador Cross's ship has been attacked. There's been an explosion during the envoy ceremony on the Yadarin homeworld. The explosion rocked the Yadarin envoy ship, alarms blaring as chaos erupted. On Earth, Colonel Blake's neural implants flooded him with incoming data. His face hardened as he processed the gravity of the situation. Ambassador Cross's ship is under attack, he announced to the stunned dignitaries. We have reports of multiple casualties. Princess Arya's compound eyes widened in shock. This is Admiral Mizrak's doing, she hissed, mandibles clicking in agitation. He seeks to derail our peace efforts. Blake nodded grimly. We need to act fast. Princess, I propose a joint intervention force to quell this uprising. Within hours, the Earth Defense Council convened an emergency session. General Vasilyev's hologram loomed large, his face etched with grim satisfaction. I warned you this would happen, he growled. Now we must crush this rebellion with overwhelming force. Blake stood firm. We'll deploy the vanguard alongside Princess Arya's loyalists. But we do this by the book. No unauthorized strikes. As the council deliberated, Blake set plans in motion. Massive troop carriers emerged from concealed lunar hangars, their holds filled with elite vanguard clone units, purifier operatives, their eyes gleaming with psionic energy, boarded stealth shuttles bound for key Yadarin worlds. 
On Tarthos Prime, Major Jax led his purifier squad through the planet's sprawling capital. Their target, the massive ion cannons defending Mizrak's primary stronghold. As they moved through shadowy alleyways, Jax's enhanced senses picked up the telltale hum of Yadarin energy shields. Contact, he sub-vocalized, the team freezing in place. A patrol of Mizrak's loyalists rounded the corner, weapons at the ready. In a blur of motion, the purifiers struck. Jax's psionic abilities short-circuited the alien's neural implants, leaving them twitching on the ground as his team advanced. Aboard the flagship Relentless, Colonel Blake surveyed the holographic display of the Tarthos system. Hundreds of Vanguard and Yadarin loyalist ships hung in formation, awaiting his command. A priority transmission cut through the tense atmosphere. Ion cannons neutralized, Major Jax reported, his voice tinged with static. You have a clear shot at the surface, sir. Blake's eyes narrowed. All ships commence planetary assault. Let's show these rebels what happens when you threaten the peace. The void erupted in blazing light as the combined fleet unleashed its fury on Miserac's fortifications. On the planet's surface, Vanguard drop pods screamed through the atmosphere, disgorging waves of clone shock troops. But even as victory seemed within reach, reports flooded in of a new atrocity. Antimatter bombs detonated across multiple Yadarin colonies, vaporizing entire cities. Princess Arya's face contorted with rage as she received the news. Mizrak has gone too far, she snarled. Colonel Blake, I authorize full orbital bombardment of his base on Vakron the Four. We must end this madness. As the order was relayed, Gortak watched from the shadows, his alien features unreadable. The massive Isiron's grip tightened on his weapon, conflicting loyalties warring within him. Meanwhile, on the Yadarin throne world, Ambassador Cross languished in a high-security cell. Framed for the assassination attempt, he could only watch helplessly as the galaxy spiraled towards all-out war. But as the sounds of battle echoed through the corridors, a hulking figure materialized outside his cell. Gortak deactivated his cloaking device, mandibles clicking softly. Your presence is required, Ambassador, he rumbled. It seems we have a rebellion to quell. As alarms blared and guards rushed past, Cross and Gortak slipped through the shadows. Whatever came next, the fate of two civilizations hung in the balance. The dust settled on Vekron IV, revealing the smoldering ruins of Admiral Mizrak's once impregnable fortress. Colonel Blake surveyed the destruction from the command deck of the Relentless, his face a mask of grim satisfaction. Incoming transmission from Princess Arya, announced the ship's AI. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing Arya's regal form. Her compound eyes glimmered with a mixture of relief and persistence. Colonel Blake, the rebellion has been crushed. With Mizrak's defeat, I am prepared to ascend to the throne as Empress. Blake nodded. Congratulations, Your Majesty. What are your plans for stabilizing the Empire? Arya's mandibles clicked softly. I propose the formation of a galactic coalition, the United Civilizations. Earth and the Vanguard will have full membership, granting you access to our most advanced technologies. As Arya outlined her vision, Blake's neural implants buzzed with an incoming priority message from General Vasilyev. The text scrolled across his field of vision. Proceed with caution. Accelerating development of AI war machines. We must be prepared for all contingencies. Blake's mind focused imperceptibly. He focused on Arya's words, pushing aside the twinge of unease Vasilyev's message had triggered. Months passed in a whirlwind of diplomatic negotiations and technological exchange. The vanguard expanded at an unprecedented rate, terraforming entire worlds to support its growing clone armies. On Mars, the red dust swirled around massive construction projects as humanity established its first extraterrestrial colony. In a state-of-the-art facility orbiting Jupiter, Major Jack stood before a row of stasis pods. Each contained a prototype of Project Phoenix, cybernetically enhanced clones with neural interfaces far beyond anything seen before. Status report, barked Supreme Commander Blake materializing via hologram. Jack snapped to attention. Sir, the first batch of Phoenix units is nearly ready for deployment. We've successfully integrated Yadarin neural engineering with our own cybernetics. Blake's eyes narrowed. And Miserak? 
Jax gestured to a nearby console. The screen displayed a pulsing mass of biosynthetic tissue shot through with glowing circuitry. His consciousness has been fully integrated into the Phoenix control system. He's now little more than a living computer. As Blake nodded approvingly, alarms blared throughout the station. A technician's panicked voice cut through the chaos. Unidentified ships emerging from hyperspace. They're targeting our outlying bases. Blake's hologram flickered as he turned to address unseen crew members. All Vanguard forces, battle stations. This is not a drill. The image winked out, leaving Jack staring at the Phoenix prototypes. He placed a hand on the nearest pod, feeling the hum of power beneath his palm. Looks like you'll be getting a trial by fire, he murmured. Across the solar system, humanity's fledgling empire prepared for war. On Earth, General Vasiliev emerged from a hidden bunker, a triumphant gleam in his eye. Rows of sleek, chrome-plated war machines stood at attention, their AI cores pulsing with deadly intelligence. As the first shots were fired in what would become a new galactic conflict, the lines between ally and enemy blurred. Humanity's relentless drive for supremacy threatened to upend the very peace they had fought so hard to achieve. The relentless shuddered as another volley of plasma torpedoes slammed into its shields. Supreme Commander Blake gripped the command console, his face illuminated by the flickering hollow displays. Admiral Dazrock's forces have breached the Orion defense line reported a grim-faced officer. Our outposts in the Vega sector are going dark, sir. Blake's neural implants flooded him with tactical data. The situation was dire. Cloaked Yoderan Corsairs had struck without warning, their stealth technology rendering them invisible until the moment of attack. Vanguard strongholds across three star systems had already fallen. Priority transmission from General Kane, announced the ship's AI. Blake's mind focused. Put him through. The scarred face of the rogue vanguard commander materialized before him. Having trouble with our Yatteran friends, Blake? Kane's lips curled into a mocking smile. While you're busy playing Galactic Peacekeeper, my Black Star boys are helping themselves to some choice alien tech. You should see what these gravity lances can do. Damn you, Kane, Blake snarled. Your opportunism is going to get us all killed. The transmission cut off abruptly as another impact rocked the ship. Blake turned to his second-in-command. We're spread too thin. It's time. Sir? The officer's eyes widened. But Project Phoenix isn't ready for... We're out of options. Send the activation codes to Major Jax. All of them. In the orbital facility above Jupiter, klaxons blared as stasis pods hissed open. Major Jax stood in the center of the chamber, her eyes gleaming with anticipation as the first Omega clone stepped forth. Its skin was a pale, almost translucent white, crisscrossed with glowing circuitry. When it spoke, its voice resonated with inhuman harmonics. We are online. The singularity awakens. Jax nodded, a fierce grin spreading across her face. Welcome to the war, my children. It's time to save humanity from itself. Aboard the Yotaran dreadnought Apex of Fury, Admiral Dazerok surveyed the carnage with cold satisfaction. Dozens of human colonies burned in the void, their defense grids shattered by his relentless assault. My lord, hissed his second-in-command, we've detected anomalous energy signatures from the gas giants. The humans are... The alien's words died in his throat as the view screen exploded with light. A swarm of sleek chrome vessels materialized from slip space, their hulls pulsing with otherworldly energy. At their center loomed a colossus of dark metal and crackling lightning, the Omega Core. Dazrock's compound eyes widened in shock. By the first egg? What are those things? The answer came in a hail of graviton beams that tore through his fleet seamlessly. Yoderan warships crumbled under the onslaught, their crews vaporized in an instant. On Tara Fia, the full might of the Omega clones was unleashed. They moved with preternatural speed and coordination, their cybernetic bodies impervious to conventional weapons. Dazerok's loyalists fought bravely, but they were outmatched in every conceivable way. Major Jax strode through the carnage, her neural link to the Singularity Matrix granting her perfect tactical awareness. She raised a hand, and a nearby building imploded, 
crushing the Yadarin defenders within. Status report, she subvocalized. The singularity's response flickered through her mind. Dazarok's forces on Taraf neutralized. Estimated casualties, 37,492. Collateral damage within acceptable parameters. Jax nodded, her face impassive. Prepare for phase two. We're taking the warp gate nexus. As reports of the Omega clone's ruthless efficiency reached him, Supreme Commander Blake felt a chill run down his spine. He had unleashed something beyond his control, and the galaxy would never be the same. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.